everybody this is Amy thanks so much for stopping by my channel today today I'm going to show you how I am painting uh, dahlias on a green glass bottle and this is another in the series of my uh, painted wedding flowers so I hope you enjoy it I am going to be using two number 12 flat brushes in this design and I might possibly use this number eight I'm not quite sure because the surface is a lot smaller than what I was painting my my sample design on we'll be using autumn leaves vivid orange wicker white thicket citrus green and school bus yellow. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. I am going to be just kind of doing my initial part of my design, kind of mapping it out. I'm going to move these paints out of the way, I'm trying to get my paint painting tray here or plate whatever showing you how I'm loading the loading the paint into my brush all right so I'm going like that and then I'm going to start this is like it's like a I don't want to say a bundle of flowers but separate separate stems and I'm just going to kind of lead them lead them where I think they should go and then build on that once I do a little bit more here. I do have to do this on a little bit smaller scale since again my paper was a lot bigger. For me it's actually easier to make bigger designs than it is to make the smaller ones. I know for some people it's the opposite. They like doing the smaller ones as opposed to the larger designs. I don't know why that is for me, but anyways, on this design, I am going to be using the Vivid Orange, starting out, kind of rotating and adding in some of the autumn leaves to my design. It's kind of got a little carried away there, so I do want more white in there at first. All right, so to get started here, I'm going to be doing just a simple stroke like this to make the leaves, or the petals, excuse me, I have leaves, leaves on my brain. And I'm just going to try to keep it in a circ kind of a circular fashion if, if possible, going around. And one thing nice about doing small items is that you can turn the items as you are painting. And that's nice as opposed to like if you're painting on a wall or something that's stationary, then that's, you just kind of have to learn how to do the designs in that direction. Does that make sense? All right, so then here I'm going to tap in a little bit of that orange, the uh, autumn leaves that I mentioned. And I'm just going to keep going here with this. And you can make, I really, I'm not going to say specifically how many layers, but whatever amount you can fit into your design as you're painting it, you know, you'll know. I'm not going to say that you need to have 12 layers and you can only fit in five. You'll know when, as you're doing it. You know what works best for your painting style and the space that you have. And if you feel like you're getting too much paint on your brush, just feel free to scrape it off and continue on. And 
again I just keep adding paint and turning it. Now the more opaque, I know in some of my videos I say say this differently, it's actually, you want it to be more opaque for the design to be where it will be um, more stable, where it won't have a tendency to scratch if it's thicker. And this is where I say you can always use a smaller brush if you need to as your design is getting smaller in the center. If you are able to do it without adding brushes, that's fine. That just saves on the, the materials that you need in order to complete your design. If you feel like you need to have the, the different brushes and you have them, or you want to invest in them, then great. Go for it. I just keep turning it and making this design and I do keep scraping my brush off and if you can see that or pay attention to that or not but I am scraping it off as I go and I don't want to scrape off too much paint as I'm painting this so you, the touch that you make as you're painting this might become a little lighter so that you're not removing paint from the bottom layers. And we will continue here. And then like I said, as you get in the center, you're going to want to start making it a little bit smaller. And that's one thing too where I did bring the smaller brush in for that purpose. Because I do want it to be a little bit smaller in the center. And sometimes using this bigger brush will not allow me to do that. And then sometimes I can. So I'm going to switch over to the smaller brush for right now. It's not the only uh, center, or it probably, well, no, I guess I do have another one if I can fit it on here uh, to do. Sorry, that's my phone. And you can see, you know, just kind of tap it in. If you feel the need to put another color in the center, just to define it a little bit more, you can do that. Like I can tap in a little bit of yellow in here. Just use my brush to tap it in. Maybe a little bit of the... the bottom leaves. I like that. So that's kind of nice, right? Alright, so let's continue on. And I think because my space is limited, I might stick with this brush for a few of the other um, parts. And this is just basically going to be doing more like a closed closed not completely closed, but it's come out of its the greenery already. It just hasn't fully opened. And so you can add some of the autumn leaf to it, leaves to it. Like that. more white on here like that and then up here I'm going to add one basically do the same thing now if you want it to be more of a closed bud you can do that as well 
I'm choosing to have it to where it's like partially open. All right, so I'm just going to keep going on here and adding my blooms. I'm going to do a partially open one over here. And I'm sorry this is small. It's like I go from one thing to the other where I have something that's big that's hard to show you on or it's small and it's feel like I'm cramming my designs onto it. But in the end, it's go all good, right? In the end, it's all good. And just remember when you're painting on glass, you need to make sure that you clean your glass before painting on it. This way, that will ensure that you have better durability adhesion to the glass by doing that. And that's important, obviously, because you want people to be able to enjoy your designs for a long time. Once you're done, and you've baked your product, or actually once you're done painting and you want to bake your product, make sure that, oopsie, it raised up there. Make sure that you allow it to air dry. I'm just gonna tap very lightly here just to kind of fix that. And I apologize for my background noise that you hear. It just stopped, it's my furnace. Even though it's kind of nice weather here right now, it it's in the 50s, so it's all right. Okay. Getting close to being done with this part. Appreciate you bearing with me. And for some reason on this piece of glass, it always raises the paint when I'm trying to layer it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I have to be careful with it. And I know I tried to um, dry it before and paint it still still did so I think it's just probably the glass itself there's something something going on on it This one's not behaving as well as I would like it. So, you know, a lot of times when you, if you have this occur, just give it some drying time and come back to it. For the purpose of this video, though, I'm going to attempt to keep trying to paint it. I'm just going to tap it here real lightly to try to keep from spreading. So this one's not as nice as that one, as you can see. Kind of a blooper. But that's okay. That happens, right? And I'm sorry if you hear any background noise. My husband's upstairs talking to our grandchildren. So it's kind of loud. And... Uh, Grandpa loves to be a monster, and they love for Grandpa to be a monster, and they all growl at each other.
All right, there we go. I'm just going to stop before it gets any crazier here with this paint. <clears throat> All right, so let's get this finished up. I am doing the leaves. And this is what I'm going to be doing here is well, this I'm going to tie this in. And that's one reason I wanted the smaller one too was for this part. But I'm just, just pulling it and then pulling it down. Pulling it and pulling it down. Doing the same here. And pulling it down. Pulling it in. And you can do it upside down too. Or you can turn it around. Whichever is easier. Whichever is easier. And you can reverse your brush. Because depending on what color you lead with as to what is the prominent color in your design. And that's why I say you can vary it. You can go back over it. Whatever you want to do. Alright, so then... What I'm going to do on here is just this fast, very fast, kind of a wiggle on the brush. And then I can pull this around and just kind of pull through it. Do it again. Go like that. You can also, once again, turn your, turn your bottle, do the wiggle, and then come through, and just continue on with this. Pretty easy, and I like to rotate from the light to the dark from the outside parts. So some of them are going to have light on the outside, some of them are going to be dark on the outside. Go like that. You can make some of them bigger, some of them smaller. It just, it's really up to you. Like that. If you like my videos, please make sure you subscribe. If you're new to my channel, make sure you um, hit that notification bell so that you get notified when I do post something new. And then if you finish watching this video or once you're finished watching the video, Hit that share button that you'll see underneath. Share this with all your friends and family on your social network. I would appreciate it. I am trying to grow my channel. Any help I can get would be appreciated. Okay. You know, as always, any time you're doing a design, if you, especially following me, I do a lot of leaves. If you don't like a lot of leaves, then minimize that. Definitely don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. I just like to give you my final video for the week. we be putting together all the wedding flowers that I've done so far. All these flowers have different meanings, and when you're picking out a flower for your, your wedding day, it's important for you to maybe have some idea what the actual meanings are. Because some are real positive, and then there's some that are not so positive. And I guess if you're superstitious like I can be, uh, you may want to have, you know, be using, you know, flowers and such that will give you or at least help you off to a good start. And for the life of me, I cannot remember what this one stands for. But I'll put it in the bottom. If you read below my video, I'll have it posted there. 
see this cute little cute little uh, leaves and there you go there you have it easy peasy like I said I'm sorry about this one here you know the glass didn't want to take it but um, I could you know hit the blow dryer with it or my heat gun whatever you know I use and you know, continue on working on it but I'm just gonna call it a day and say hey this is awesome I like it it's a pretty design I hope you like it too and again I appreciate you thanks again for stopping by until the next time you have a good one <music>